energy transition that seems to have happened in the past has primarily been driven by scarcity of supply. And in terms of this energy transition, we actually seem to be driven more by social license and environmental issues. The point of fact is, is we're producing more hydrocarbon today than we ever have in the world, and scarcity of supply doesn't seem to be an issue. So it's a transition that's very unusual in terms of what's driving it uh, and what those potential outcomes may, may end up looking like. On a broad scale, you're seeing innovation in terms of heavy oil, oil sands, those large scale projects, uh, where innovation has been an ongoing project for the last 10 to 15 years and people have a long term view of making that economic. Uh, and so I think the social license, the environmental issues just become part of that innovation fabric that continue to propel those projects forward. I think for the lower tier producers, perhaps more focused on conventionals or different reservoirs than heavy oil, uh, this is a time where survival has been of the utmost importance and innovation itself has been taking a back seat uh, in the last 24 months in terms of the downturn in pricing. I think as we start to see some of the green shoots within the economy, we start seeing uh, the fact that the price of oil is now leveling to a point where people can understand what the economics of that look like. As we're starting to get a better understanding of what social license and environmental issues really look like on a, on a granular basis, I think companies are now starting to put their ideas towards how do we innovate uh, beyond surviving in this current economy, but actually now start looking at how do we get a return uh, on our business. The role of government is not to pick winners, not to pick losers, but to set a playing field where every energy uh, proponent uh, or practitioner, if you will, understands what the environmental benchmarks are, what the guidelines are, and there's some continuity in the sense that those will exist over a period of time. So investors can understand by hitting these benchmarks today, uh, investing in making those benchmarks today, that those benchmarks will exist over time and there'll be a return down the road. In the end, government can't pick winners and losers. All it can do is set that playing field uh, so that we all understand what the stakes are, what the outcomes are, and ultimately provide an industry that meets uh, both the social license and environmental issues and the economics required uh, to produce energy. When we look at the challenges in the industry today, it's naive to think that continuing to go out and drill fresh wells to maintain oil production is the way of the future. What we need to do is look at our existing well bores, millions of which exist around the, well, the world today, and look at how we can optimize each one of those well bores, keep them flowing in a productive manner with the lowest possible risk per well bore. That's really the view that we had around WASP, low risk, uh, high productivity of existing well bores, and really trying to change that environmental, that safety conversation, that conversation around how many resources are required in a single well bore to maintain its life over a much longer period than perhaps we're used to today. And really that's what the genesis of WASP was all about. It was this concept of being able to use very small amounts of energy in an environmentally responsible fashion, reduce the safety risk at the well site, and go out to those millions of underperforming well bores around the world and stimulate or enhance their production by removing downhole impediments in a very low risk, easy fashion. I think the path to commercialization, generally, uh, you need to make sure you clearly identify what the challenge is in each of those markets and attack only those markets. Building that technology, identifying those challenges, and then specifically focusing on those markets with a very clear, concise message about the challenge within that market and how you're addressing it uh, would ease your path to commercialization. Canada has a reputation in the oil and gas industry as somewhere that is very difficult to be economical, be safe, be environmentally responsible, and still conduct a successful operation. Being able to transition from Canada into the United States, into the North Sea, to Norway, Denmark, uh, the Middle East, really because we're a Canadian company and people already look at that as a bit, a bit of a symbol of success, that if you can work successfully within that difficult Canadian environment, this is clearly a technology that we should have our attention on uh, here in, in these jurisdictions. In terms of the Canadian history of innovation in the hydrocarbon industry, uh, we have overcome some extreme challenges in being able to make our market uh, both safe, environmentally responsible, and, and economic. And I think as we go out around the world and talk to uh, people in the industry, they really recognize Canada uh, in terms of overcoming those challenges and offering lots of technologies, lots of skill sets uh, that would help them within their own markets uh, achieve similar goals. Oil production today, regardless of where it is, is undercoming uh, more and more scrutiny around environmental and social license. We have a step up on many of these countries or many of these jurisdictions that are producing and that lends them the natural inclination to look at Canada as a potential leader of that technology, that skill set, those personnel. 
And so as you look towards the Middle East, as you look towards Europe, uh, and even Latin America, to example, the gain of social license, the gain of environmental awareness is really driving a lot of those national oil companies to be much more responsible in their own operations, which lends an easy conversation for a Canadian company to walk in and say, hey, this is what we're doing in Canada. Let's talk about how we're going to work in your jurisdiction. Thank you.